Brian Bomack McIntyre, who trains Terence Crawford, trains Chris Eubank, trains a bunch of other fighters, just got arrested for gun possession. And I've got an article which I think shows that he won't serve any prison time for it. We've also got UFC Paris, just who each fighter is going to fight next in that. We've got Cyril Gann, we've got Rose Nama Yunus, Manon Faro. So yeah, let's get right into it. But before I do, make sure to like, subscribe, do all of that YouTube stuff, bro. It helps me out a fuckload. Trust me. So yeah, let's get into it. Peace. Pound for pound number one, Terence Crawford's trainer, Bomack, got arrested in Manchester Airport after helping Chris Eubank Jr. win his fight, which was a masterful performance. I didn't really get to talk about it as much as I would have liked to because I was locked out of my house when I was going to record it for like 10, 13 hours yesterday. So I didn't get to record that breakdown, but just so everybody knows my thoughts on it, Chris Eubank Jr., Liam Smith, Chris Eubank, literally one of the best performances I've ever seen from him, completely dominant. Obviously, Liam Smith had some things going into it that we didn't see. He said his weight cut was really bad. He could have had a few injuries going into it. His ankles didn't look right. His chin didn't look right. But you can't take that away from how good Chris Eubank Jr. was. And I think Bomack is a big part of that, helping Terrence Crawford out, helping Chris Bank Jr. out. I'm not sure how that's gonna stop. I know that Errol Spence did activate the rematch clause, but is that gonna affect it? Is that gonna stop the rematch happening? Probably for at least a while. He's there till October 9th. I personally think that he won't get any actual time in prison. And I'll show you in one second why I think that. But just reading through this 10:45 a.m., you can see that he didn't really mean to have it if you were trying to sneak a gun back to the US. Why would you have it in your check-in? You know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't really make any sense. Um, I don't know why he brought it here in the first place. I presume there's a whole story with it. I presume that he accidentally brought it. It was in the wrong bag. He didn't realize it was in there, but he did get charged with possession of a firearm with possession of a firearm and possession of ammunition for a firearm without a certificate. But let me let me show you this story. This is a different story. This is not Bomac, but it's kind of a similar situation. Man with gun and luggage at Heathrow says he didn't know it was there. So a passenger was jailed here after gun was found in his carry-on luggage at Heathrow Airport. You can see if someone's got a carry, got it in their carry-on, they clearly aren't trying to smuggle it. And why would you be smuggling a gun from the UK to the US? It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, this is a Japanese guy. Um, he didn't know uh, the working automatic pistol, a loaded magazine, and loose cartridges were in the pockets of a suitcase as it passed through a scanner. Mexican went through Paris as well and then went to London. So it didn't get caught until his final stop in London. And he was sentenced, yeah, to a total of 26 months in prison. So I know you're thinking right now, like, what are you talking about? Uh, you're saying Bomax not going to get sentenced, but he got sentenced. Sentenced to 26 months in prison uh, after telling Judge Robson the incident was accidental it happened because of complete innocent carelessness, which I think is true. I think it'll be true in Bomax's case as well. Bomack will also have a really good lawyer just because he makes enough money to have a good lawyer to get him out of this situation. But he got great references from a former ambassador and president of Mexico City. There's no way Bomack's not going to get that. Terence Crawford was given the key. Was it a key to the city? And he got land for a dollar from a, from the city to open up his new gym so they can talk about how he like is a great service for the community, trains kids, trains huge boxers to give all these people a like a chance in life, hope in life, so they, they can spin all that around. I don't think they'll have any problem with this. They wrote in, they appealed it after, and he was given a two-year suspended sentence. If you don't know how a suspended sentence works, it's like, well, I'm giving you the sentence, and if you commit a crime in the two years, you get that, uh, like, you get the two-year sentence. But if you don't commit a crime, you're good, you're free, he's okay to go back to the US. He might get banned from the UK, I'm not sure how it'll work in that type of thing, so he might have Chris Eubank fighting elsewhere, someone else in his corner if he fights in the UK. But um, it's not his problem. And I think that he will get a suspended sentence because he is almost celebrity-like. He's definitely a celebrity in the boxing world, but celebrity-like. After that, we've got Dana White Contender Series, the weigh-ins, just looking at it really quick before it happens. We've got Bruno Lopez, Brenson, Ribeiro. I will be doing a full breakdown of the matchups and the fights and who I think is going to win tomorrow. Uh, before those happen, so look out for that. But we've got Ramon Tavares, who made weight on a second try. Originally was one thirty, originally was over it, got down to one thirty six. Everyone else here. The only weird one is Bruno Lopez, two hundred four, overcut a little bit. 
everything else looks completely normal here everyone made weight which is great and uh so i'm not sure if that uh that 136 if you have a hard weight cut it might change money line might change who you think you're gonna bet on it definitely does add a factor in for me next we've got tom aspinall's comments in relation to cyril gan where he says i'm not no bully if he doesn't want to fight i'm essentially not gonna fight him i think that it's the right decision for cyril gan what i really think is gonna happen is that jones stipe is gonna happen and that we're gonna see both of them retire after that fight maybe if jones loses he won't retire but i'm pretty sure if he wins he's gonna retire after that fight which would retire him as the goat C cyril gan might be looking to squeeze into that title fight uh for the vacant title where we'll see i don't know either tom aspinall or sergey pavlovich but i want to see people stay active i'd love to see this fight sergey pavlovich tom aspinall i think it would be a great fight super fun for the heavyweight division sergey pavlovich's power against tom aspinall see how well-rounded he is but i can see why cyril gan doesn't want this fight he kind of wants to slide into that position so i don't know i agree with cyril grant gan tom aspinall calling him out was right and uh, I just want to see any of these three fight each other. And then you've got a clear top two in the division. On to Cyril Gan again. In Horshanu, Cyril Gan got a... He got robbed during his, during his fight at UFC Paris. It's a bit of a weird one. $160,000, £130,000 were, were taken at 7.30 BSD on Sunday. I'm not sure if they've targeted him specifically because he's in that fight or what happened but it is sad and i hope that uh i hope cyril Gan gets his shit back because that was awful get robbed like that you know what i mean like cyril Gan, cyril Gan's not someone that doesn't work hard for his money he literally goes out there and gets beat up for his money or beats someone else up um so yeah i feel bad from just thought i'd say it really want to really want to get a shit back on to ufc paris i'm only going to do the main card today and talking about who they should fight next just because uh prelims you it's hard to find people for the next prelim people to fight for taylor laplace to fight for all of these people to fight just because they're not really in the rankings i'm going to be saying names you don't know but for morgan charrier had a great round one knockout against man manolo zucchini great body kick oh that shit it hurts so bad you can even see just his toes digging into him it hurts so bad but taking a look at who i think he should fight i think the fight for him is kusin askabov 23 and 1 from the Netherlands, I think it should be a great fight. Morgan Charrier is just around here, same spot as him. Maybe if you want to give him more of a test, more of a lineup, you bring him up here against someone like Sung Woo Choi, Gavin Tucker, Diego Lopez. I think it'd be a great fight. And then William Gomez, since he's the next person. Three fight win streak, won his last three. Should be should get a step up now. Jack Shore would be a super interesting fight for him. Charles Jordan would be a great fight. And then as you get up here, you get kind of to just too high from just a level too high. I think Nate Ludovere is a, just a step too far from. So I think if you really want to push the guy, you give him Charles Jordan. I think Jack Shore would be a great fight. Diego Lopez is another one I think would be a fun fight for him. But that's those two done. After this fight, we had Volkan Ozdemir against Bogdan Guskov. Volkan Ozdemir, I think he gets a step up at light heavyweight, ninth ranked in the division before this fight i'm not sure what he is right now but i think he gets a step up and i'm trying to think who's there you kind of have that top heavy division of where you have johnny walker johnny walker's not going to fight down alex Pereira, yiri jamal um you've got loads of people that are good in that light heavyweight i think that kind of top four if you know what i mean is a little bit of a step up for volcan i'm not sure if he's at that yet but Anthony Smith had a good win. Nikita Krylov had a good win. I think the next fight for him is uh, Anthony Smith or Nikita Krylov. I don't think he quite cracks that Johnny Walker level in terms of rankings. I it would be a fun fight. I'd watch it for sure. But I think the fight for him next is Nikita Krylov. After that, we have Benoit St. Denis against Thiago Moises. Fight of the night. Round 2 KO. Benoit just kind of put it on him. I wasn't watching that fight a whole lot. And... I was watching the boxing while that was on, but should be a fun, was a fun fight, was a good, was a nice knockout, watch the knockout. Who do I have him fighting next? Benoit St. Dennis, 12th in the rankings. This lightweight step up is crazy though, like the step up from fighting someone like a, um, from who we fought to like a Rafael Fazeev to a Mateusz Gamarod is definitely a big step up. Do I think he's ready for that? No, not yet. Maybe Grant Dawson is a good one to give him. I feel like Sarukian is a level up that he's just not at. Gamrod, I feel like, is another one where it's kind of a level he's not at. 
it's weird. It's weird, and I don't know who I give him to. But I feel like you don't want to give him a step back. Maybe you give him to Matt Provola, Drew Dober. Those would all be great fights. But he just fought someone in Thiago Moises, who's probably lower ranked than he is. Dan Hooker would be a fun fight. Actually, that's probably the fight I'd go with. Either Grant Dawson or Dan Hooker, I think, is who will get next. I'd hope Grant Dawson. I think that Dan Hooker might finish him. But I'd, I think Grant Dawson gets it done, and that's a fun fight. Rose and Manon Firo. Manon gets a title shot. That's just, that's it. It's that simple. She gets a title shot. What Rose does next, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's saying at 115 or 125. When she makes that decision, we'll see. But at 125, there's a few fun fights for her. It's not all that interesting. But Cyril Gann, I think that he will either fight Sergei Pavlovich or Tom Aspinall. I'm not 100% sure which one yet. But... If John Jones wins the title and doesn't retire, Cyril Gann does not get a title shot. So if we see a double retirement, I think we'll see one of those two guys step in and they'll fight for the vacant title against Cyril Gann. Sergei Spivak, who he fights next, he kind of goes back into that whole pool of heavyweights. Maybe a Derek Lewis off a great win. I'm not sure, but that's all that I have for you guys today. That's all that's going on really in combat sports. And yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.